to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Friday, December 18th. Excited to be with you all. More excited than than I think Mike Mike is right now. Mike, hey, everybody. Mike is with us. I mean. Great news, everyone. I didn't play Keenan Allen. No, that's not true. I wish. Oh, <laughs> man. If I, if I had this just huge ruse planned out where I publicly proclaim I'm playing Keenan Allen only to bench him at the last possible second. There are different types of fantasy football tilt. There are the short-term tilt, mm -hmm. right? Like a, it's very, uh, it's quick. It happens. I would say that it's somewhat what Jason dealt with uh, Sunday morning, decision making wise. You have an imminent timeline, and then there's long-term tilt. Yeah. LT LTT. And uh, Mike, from the moment he heard Keenan Allen's questionable situation in the show yesterday, through, I think now, I think still right this moment. I I am still clinically depressed at this moment, <laughs> uh, and here's what happens. I'm diagnosing you with LTT. Y yeah, the the fact that I mean I was tilting all day, as I'm sure many of you out there were. Do you start him? Got to wait for the the last second news, um, and then I had kind of got to this point of peace. Like, yeah, I I'm gonna start him. I know that you, this is potentially a really bad idea, and then. The man himself runs onto the field screaming into the camera, don't sit me. Don't sit me, says Keenan Allen, because he's feeling great. He's going to go ball out against the division Now, were you lip-reading, or was that... You, no, you, you, you could heard hear it. it? Yes, oh, okay. you, you heard it. What you didn't see was that the cameraman was Anthony Lynn. He was trying <laughs> to talk to the head coach and say, don't sit me. Yes. And uh, the head coach did not listen. Yeah, there was some discussion on our Slack. Was Did we miss uh, some some uh, punctuation? Was it, don't sit me. Right. Like, right. Uh, what was he perhaps sending out a, a dire warning for all of fantasy players? Yeah, maybe players? Anthony Lynn said, get in there. And he said, don't sit me. And, yeah. And honestly, at the beginning of the game, yeah, sure. He, I mean, he didn't look like speedy Keenan Allen. No, he didn't. But it was, okay. Keenan Allen is involved, and then you know they're doing the the reporting. Oh, they're going to pick their spots, and then like immediately after they say they're going to pick their spots for Keenan Allen, he's out there blocking, r rushing DBs. You're like, what? This is the spot. This is the spot that we have picked for Keenan Allen. We're only going to bring him on the field for run plays. Like, Keenan Allen is an elite route runner. It, it, it so it was. Uh, I think I knew early. Oh, I knew. Because you, well, you watched him, and, and he would run into the defender, and he wouldn't separate from the defender, and you're like, oh, maybe breaking is not a thing that he can do. There was his first real catch where I mean, he made a nice uh, nice move. He was wide open. More of a rub route type yeah, of situation. Yeah, and it was, okay, they're going to figure, they're going to manufacture things for Keenan Allen because they know that his hands are great. He is reliable. And then you just didn't see him anymore. And I, I knew by the second quarter. Okay, I've I've made a terrible, terrible decision, and I'm just gonna sit and watch it happen over and over and over. Now, what you didn't necessarily expect was Justin Herbert to be able to put up such a an explosive fantasy right. day with essentially no Keenan Allen. Allen had one catch for 17 yards, or yeah, somewhere right around, around there. there. Yeah. <clears throat> But Justin Herbert was outstanding. Herbert was great. He ends up getting that nice little uh, treat of a rushing touchdown right at the very end. Tyron Johnson ends up with a touchdown. Jalen Guyton had a huge game and would have had a bigger one if they didn't pass interfere with him every time he was trying to run by them. Right. Um, and then on the other side of the football, <laughs> Derek, my groin. Uh, Derek Carr went out, which, you know, I saw the reaction. Some people had to start Derek Carr yesterday. Oh. And... Um, What's worse, starting Derek Carr or starting Keenan Allen? Oh, starting Derek Carr without yeah. question. Yeah, starting Derek Carr because that that was a sneak attack. That was you're on a, a nice jaunt, you know, just just having a peaceful jog through the through, well, through Central Park. Could have been Park. a touchdown too. The Derek Carr was like 
He could have tried to run it in right then too. Right. Got you points. And then, I mean, well, but what's worse, starting Derek Carr, and he goes out to the injury, or being Derek Carr, right? And now potentially watching Marcus Mariota take your job because uh, Mariota looked pretty good. Yeah, and I don't think he can take his job. I agree. I, I'm not worried about Marcus Mariota. I mean, obviously, if the injury is is long, that's term, what Marcus Mariota thought about Ryan Tannehill. Marcus Mariota is, has made the backup concession speech in his head. I think uh, he I don't look. He looked very good. They always do. They always do when they come in in situations like that. I I'm not saying like Mariota is going to start next week. I can almost guarantee you that today. Derek Carr will not be out there. Right. Um, but this team isn't going anywhere. They're not going to make the playoffs. How far? They're not that far out. I mean, well, they're, losing they're, another game, they're almost. I, I think they almost have no chance. That game did not statistically eliminate them, but for all intents and purposes, they're they're done. Yeah, I mean, you've got to think about Baltimore, Miami are going to be ahead of them in wild card chase. It's not going to happen. Sorry, Raiders fans. Um, Nelson Aguilar does continue to look good. Darren Waller looks great. He was absolutely he's, incredible. He's very good. Oh, goo 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 goo. You played against uh, I the I played Walrus. against Darren Waller. <laughs> All 2,000 pounds <laughs> right on you. Yeah, that was it was a fun game, 30 to 27 overtime game. Look, I I heard rave reviews. People were saying it was a really fun game. You saw just red though. I like, don't, when you look at the screen it was just blood I watched red. the whole thing. I did not have a single ounce of fun watching that football game. Yeah, but how many ounces of whiskey did you? <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> All right. Uh <laughs> Austin Eckler was limited in this game. They certainly didn't have him on the field as much. That was a report that came out later that maybe he would get a that, little bit of a snap count situation. Yeah, that happened right at the beginning of the game of, and not even a, a beat report thing. It was pre-game. They said, you know, these guys have all been injured, and they uh, they talked again about the snap count for Keenan Allen and Mike Williams, which they had said that, and in, They've said that about a lot of players. It doesn't always come to fruition. Unfortunately, it did yesterday. And then right before the game, they said, yeah, Austin Eckler's going to be on a snap count too. And they won the game. They won they the did. game. And Kalen Balazs scored. Josh Jacobs had a nice game despite playing hurt. Um, impressive game, in my opinion, from him. You know, 26 carries while hurt, scoring a touchdown, three catches, so that's nice. If you started Josh Jacobs, you were happy. It, it yeah, and and it's so funny because he had that twenty yard run. So that means in his other twenty five carries, wow, he was twenty five for fifty six. Yeah, yeah, that's not great. But he got the touchdown yeah. and uh, had a good overall game. Um, so I think that sums up last night's events. Mostly, uh, <sighs> mostly Mike's sadness, though. Yeah, because you struggled so much look, heading into it. Look, Foot Clan, uh, I gotta keep. I'm, I've I've tried to remind myself if you started Keenan Allen, well, maybe if you faced like Waller and you played Keenan Allen, you're you're feeling really bad. But just that one that one performance by Keenan Allen has not eliminated you from the weekend, despite it feeling like that has happened. No, it certainly hasn't, and that's why starting Derek Carr is worse. You you expect twenty to twenty five from a quarterback. If you got you know ten range from a wide receiver. You know, the gap between Allen and that 10 range is, is lower than the car situation. So it is Friday. We're going to give something away. Foot Clan Friday. All right. This is almost a prequel to mm -hmm. a very special video coming out this weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, pristine auction. Every Friday, we give something away to a jointhefoot.com supporter. Today, it's a DeAndre Swift signed jersey going out to John Luke. Oh, oh make it so. Yes, Engage. make it so. We did. <laughs> Just, you got anything else you want to throw out? Uh, live long and prosper. Uh, okay. <laughs> Wait. We're, we're missing I mean, That it. wasn't his saying, but from the same universe. He's always been the same age, right? John Luke Picard? Yes. He, he came out of the womb about 60. Yep. And he's currently like 65. He he had to have had more catchphrases. I'm not a Star Trek guy, Jason. You were a Star Trek guy. Uh, yeah. Number I mean, one. Yeah, but I mean, this isn't a Star Trek pod, so I just went with the, <laughs> the popular stuff. But look, yes, what did what did uh, Jean Luc win? Uh, signed DeAndre Swift jersey. But uh, we have a. 
big, big Christmas giveaway saying thank you to everybody supporting the show. A huge, huge video. We are giving away thousands of dollars in partnership with uh, with Pristine Auction. Thousands of thousands of dollars worth of stuff. Signed memorabilia. It's just going to the Foot Clan. It's going to people who comment on the YouTube. Brooks, when is that YouTube video going to be live? We're aiming for this weekend. We're aiming for Saturday. Okay, tomorrow, so, so make sure you go to YouTube, subscribe. Brooks has excellent aim, too, so it's going to be Saturday. We've we've filmed the video. We don't know who's getting it yet, but go and comment on the video because it's it's an insane amount of stuff, and everything we're giving away is super relevant, awesome content. All and fantasy players, all, all big stars in the NFL, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. This weekend, uh, subscribe, click the bell, and oh. you'll, you'll be notified when the giveaway happens. And... And literally, you get in there, and if you comment, you're eligible to win about half of the items in that giveaway. Mash that bell. Is that what we do? Well, I, that's I've I've heard other potatoes people say that. and the bell. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. All you ever, right. You ever had a mash bell? Mm, no. It's delicious. Pristineauction.com. Use the code Ballers for ten dollars off your first item. We talked about the Thursday night game. Let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league. Drew Brees is going to play football. Unbelievable. This weekend. I believe the direct quote from Sean Payton was, ha ha, got ya. <laughs> Starting quarterback, Sunday against the Chiefs, <laughs> fully healthy. The Saints believe he's fully healthy. And uh, this was a bit of a misdirection play from Sean Payton. You know, if you're going to throw the cards in the air, Mike, then this is the ultimate move because it is. this was bold-faced lying. I mean, he said he had a, a ways to go. And all reports, I mean, verifiable reports say that they knew that he was going to play on Monday. Uh, he came out on Monday or Tuesday and said he's got a long ways to go, and here he is. He's playing. Now, Michael Thomas hasn't practiced. Or did he? Yeah. <laughs> uh, they have him switching jerseys, right? Yeah. Um, Wednesday or Thursday, Michael Thomas didn't practice. Got to monitor that. But if he's in there, what an upgrade it is for Drew Brees. Yeah, yeah. We, we haven't seen a Michael Thomas on the field, but some – some new guy named Thomas Michael. Right. Yeah. They, running routes. He looks great. Julio Jones is going to be out. That's official. And that officially stinks. Yeah, it stinks for Matt Ryan. Yeah. Um, I guess with the Drew Brees note, you know, we should circle back there. Um, okay. Taysom Hill's not going to be your starting quarterback that in fantasy. That is an excellent point. And Drew Brees, should he be your starting quarterback in fantasy, I guess is a question I'm throwing out there. Wow. Uh, it's a later matchup. I'm sure we'll have confirmation that he's playing. Sure, act, you know, if official active status before then. But I don't think they're throwing him out there, uh, broken and unable to play quarterback. Uh, this is against the Kansas City Chiefs in prime time. Uh, th there's a high over under. I, I would expect Drew Brees to be an okay start. If if you're if you need to pivot, if let's say you were planning to play Taysom Hill and Drew Brees is out there on waivers because he's been injured. Just just make that switch. I don't think it's going to hurt you. All right. Raheem Mostert limited at practice again on Thursday, but Kyle Shanahan, if you saw the quotes, he said he should be go good to go by the end of the week. They just wanted to be careful with him in practice. This could, um, you know, it does affect the ceiling for Jeff Wilson. Certainly. So I think Jeff Wilson is still a play. I'm not sure he's a, the best play. Yeah. Because there's, there's an offense problem. There could be a quarterback change mid-game. We don't know if Kittle's going to be active. I'm I'm really uncertain about that. He's he's back at practice, but I don't know if he's back out there this week. So some question marks. If Mostert is cleared, Jason, are you still very comfortable with Jeff? I am very comfortable with Jeff. Uh, it, it's not to say that Mostert couldn't uh, dominate, but Jeff has been used around the goal line more than Mostert has. And if you look at the last five weeks, Dallas's fantasy points allowed above opponents' uh, average – Dallas is number two. They have been terrible. They've been giving up more than six fantasy points above the average to the running backs that they are facing, and and I just don't see them stopping the 49ers' run game. So the only way Jeff Wilson has a bad game is if Raheem Mostert just completely dominates, which can happen, but he is banged up. So you're not going to see a 70-30 you know, split in favor of Mostert. I, I just can't, I can't wrap my head around that happening. Noah Fant, full participant in Thursday's practice after the illness last week. Uh, I don't know if I really 
we've talked about so many other options at tight end. I guess I'm I'm just going to say no. Say no to Noah. Mm. Is that okay? Can I say no to Noah? You can. Um, I Curtis, think the right way to say it is just say no. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It was. I say think Noah was to right. Fant. Yeah, that's fine. Say Noah to Fant. I think uh, that, I'm not sure. I, <laughs> I'm not sure we're really on today. Just say no. Uh, yeah, that, I like it. That's it. End of sentence. I like yeah, it. And you quiet down on the back that's half right. of it. You just say no. Okay. You roll it. Into that's right. It. Okay. Look, try, try it out. Just say no. Yeah. That's, All right, yeah. Okay. You're not riding the arc. Hmm. Right. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is, this is, this is, Let me know. check the computer. Yeah. Look, <laughs> I had a long night. <laughs> it was bad. And a long morning and a long weekend. I haven't slept in three days. <laughs> Ride the snake. Uh, Curtis Samuel was added to the injury report because, of course, he was. I made him my start of the week. The matchup is too ah! out outstanding, <laughs> and Curtis Samuel is on their injury report with a hamstring injury. Questionable. Oh, yoo I mean, I shouldn't have to say this. If he's hurt, you shouldn't play him. But I would like to see what happens on the Friday practice because he could come right back and be mm -hmm. fully active in today's practice and a great start for the week. So I will say it. If he's hurt, don't play him. Mm. If he's healthy, play him. Good advice. All right. Join the foot.com for the Injury Blitz podcast, the bonus footcast every week, game day alerts, tons of uh, tools that we keep expanding on the website, exclusive for Foot Clan supporters at jointhefoot.com. So we do invite you to uh, head over there and become part of the Foot Clan. Mm -hmm. Before we get into the rest of the fantasy forecast, the matchups, certainly some questionable jokes on the way. <laughs> uh, we want to thank uh, as today's sponsors keeping the podcast going. You've heard Mike talk about it yeah, baby. earlier in the week. Look, if if I'm known for anything, it's that I like a good heist, right? I oh, mean, yeah. You guys know that about me. For yeah. sure. And Rockstar Games presents the biggest and most action-packed update to Grand Theft Auto Online yet, the Cayo Perico heist. Mm. Love this, a good heist. This is going to be great. Look, you've got Mike, lush jungle reconnaissance, dance parties on golden beaches. The Cayo Perico heist is an all-new Grand Theft Auto Online adventure for one to four players look if, if if jason's turned in early mike myself uh el rubio over there yeah, brooks the el, el rubio we can take care of business on this heist now if we're doing a heist though and we're trying to raid el rubio's compound or correct yeah but we have el rubio on our team that mm. it's gonna help us yeah it's gonna help the situation that's a help that's not a hurt no i we, feel like you can just unlock the door that's part of the planning <laughs> the preparing and the executing of the heist the planning is getting el rubio in on our side there are new vehicles there are new weapons how will we get through the security i i can't I will believe just shut it off i <laughs> know the code <laughs> uh we didn't even bring up the music locker an yes. underground dance club that mike uh is a founding member of uh, access the Grand Theft Auto Online uh, Cayo Perico Heist. It's free with every copy of Grand Theft Auto 5. Play now on PlayStation 4 and via backward compatibility on PlayStation 5. Rated M for Mature. And we want to thank HelloFresh. You can get fresh pre-measured ingredients, mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door with America's number one meal kit. We have all been using it for years. HelloFresh. They offer convenient, no-contact delivery right to your doorstep. The recipes, they're easy to follow with simple steps and pictures to guide you along the way. They, they cut out all the stressful meal planning, the grocery store shopping, the measuring everything out. And it's a great value. You could save 40% when you use HelloFresh versus shopping at your grocery store. Feeding the whole family has never been easier with lower prices for larger boxes. So servings means more savings. I like that. Over 90% of the ingredients are sourced directly from growers to ensure peak flavor and ripeness. Uh, th there are These are just delicious meals. We've done them. That is correct. And my favorite part is the variety, the fact that I'm not having spaghetti every day. I get a really cool meal that I get to make that's not something I would have made or even known how to make. I, I love it. So you can easily change your delivery days or meal plan preferences. Skip a week when you need right on the app. Keep your fridge stocked. Do what you got to do, and they are committed to giving back. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Fantasy80 and use code Fantasy80 to get $80 off, including free shipping. 
Fantasy Forecast. All right, week 15 matchups. We covered the Bills, Broncos, Panthers, Packers, Bucks, Falcons, 49ers, Cowboys, Lions, Titans, Texans, Colts uh, yesterday. And we have nine matchups to get through. So deep breaths. Mm. Only the good jokes. You know what I mean? Yeah. We don't got room for none of that. Good thing I'm so rested. Yeah. The New England Patriots at six and seven. The Miami Dolphins at eight and five. Cam Newton's arm is very rested. He hasn't had to use it much this year. He's, I guess he's tried at times. Dolphins sure. are one point favorites. It's just a 41 and a half point over under. And that is the headline here. Um, there is confidence on either side of the ball in terms of fantasy football um, opportunity, right? You don't have confidence with a rookie quarterback to a uh, facing Bill Belichick with his weapons depleted. No, I mean, we, we've talked about what Bill Belichick has historically done to rookies. We saw him out scheme Justin Herbert, and I expect the same for Tua. Uh, the fact that he doesn't have his normal allotment of weapons, that, that stinks. Um, you, you do have some players that I think you could sneak in your lineup. Tua not being one of them in this matchup. But uh, Lynn Bowden, you know, he got nine targets with Parker out, and he's a a guy that can make something happen after the catch. So you can have a short little Tua pass, which is really what Tua likes just to do. Just a Tua pass. Yes, yeah, yes got it, got just it. Just a Tua pass. Oh, man, when Andrew Siciliano get blasted, he's like, oh, look, the Dolphins <laughs> threw another slant. <laughs> yeah, oh, I loved it because that's it's ridiculous, their offense. But they've been playing well and winning games. I think it feeds into Lynn Bowden. I think because he can go into your running back slot, he's a sneaky addition mm -hmm. in a flex. It's such an interesting thing with the Dolphins because Ryan Fitzpatrick is going to threaten the, down the field and make more of those high-risk throws, and then that makes your offense more explosive. But then Tua's in there because you want to see what you have in Tua because you could end up with a very high pick. They have the Houston pick, and uh, you need to know what you have in Tua. So let's put Tua in a position to short throw the ball very, very short and not evaluate that part of his game. Exactly. Because the playoffs are on the line. So Cam Newton, no, not against this defense, not against the Dolphins who are, um, you know, upper echelon. Damian Harris. Desperation. Desperation play. Edelman back on the team doesn't mean anything for fantasy week 15. And, uh, you know, the running back situation in Miami is questionable. We, we know that Matt Breed is off the COVID list, but he's been – available to the team many times yeah, they, this year for no reason and, and it's done nothing they have not turned to Matt Burita uh even though it it seemed like he was going to be the guy at the beginning of the season when they traded for him uh so it, if you're looking at anybody you know Miles Gaskin we don't expect him back because he of how late he was uh tested positive for COVID Salvin Ahmed is really the the key here of if is he back because if he is not back then you can play DeAndre Washington as like a a flex play as a running back three, uh, just they're going to get the opportunities. They are favored, which is – that's wild, man, to see Miami favored over the Patriots. First time in seven years. That's, that's, that's probably why it feels <laughs> it's a little unusual. It's insane. Uh, but I mean, the, the, the confidence in this matchup for me lies far more in the defenses. I think that both of them are in play. I agree. Chicago Bears at six and seven take on the six and seven Minnesota Vikings divisional matchup. Vikings at three point favorites. It's a forty six and a half point over under. It's kind of an interesting matchup to me. The Bears played so well last week, dominated Houston. Uh, Minnesota won this matchup nineteen to thirteen in Week Ten, and the forty six and a half point over under. Obviously, they wouldn't have hit it with that Week Ten matchup. That was also but that Nick was Nick Foles. That was Nick Foles, and so. You know, David Montgomery, he has been a godsend for fantasy players. He's in your lineup, Dalvin Cook, of course. So the running backs, no question marks. Mm -hmm. Wide receivers, probably no question marks there either. Allen Robinson has been great with Mitch Trubisky. His numbers, 9 for 20, uh, 123 in a touchdown, 6 for 75, 8 for 74 and two touchdowns, 10 for 123 in a touchdown. No questions there. Now, Adam Thielen, Justin Jefferson, disappointing last week, but both were great against Chicago in Week 10. Yeah, you're not you're not benching either of these guys. They are too elite and have been so good on the course of the season. Hopefully, you were able to withstand a victory, as yes. I like to say, last week with having these Vikings wide receivers in your lineup. But if you did, don't 
don't overthink it. Just keep, keep playing them. The tight ends are interesting. Big Irv, mm -hmm. if Kyle Rudolph is out, and then Cole Komet, Mike has him, I think, in his in his lineup. I so. He is in my lineup. And and look, my practicing what you preach. My huh? yes, and my starts so far in that lineup have been incredible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they were last week. I wish you could have spread it out a little. Look, you could have had no issues. This tilt, you. <laughs> Do you know how much of that whiskey you'd still have in the bottle if you had just lost to me last week? Make it simple. Jason had the comical note in Slack last night. He's like, watching this game is really nice. Oh, it was it was a pleasure. I had zero tilt because, um, you know, my three leagues I was in the playoffs, I, uh, you know, I just decided I want to stress free playoffs. <laughs> So, although we are, we are still, yeah, we're good. We're, we're still in a Mike and Ice Coned dynasty team, but I don't, I don't count that one. Cause I, don't right, you it, feel like we already won the championship? Our team's I, so good? It feels like that. But the, the nice thing about that league is the importance of that league just continues to rise. That's true. Yeah. We call that league literally <laughs> dynasty junior because of its lack of importance. In fairness, that's not why we call it dino junior. Cause it was our second dynasty league mm -hmm. that we all got together yeah. in and not because, the first where well, i'm in the semifinal because of dino nuggets no, for, first the worst second dino the best. Nuggets. yeah that's that's sure, that's sure. what made me start calling it dino jr part of your snack count oh yeah all I right dino <laughs> nuggets i wonder which food i can dinosaur. bring up where you don't say that oh huh, that's a great question uh water and cereal together yeah but separate fine oh i love yeah. both seattle the Seahawks nine and four taking on the six and seven Washington football team. The Seahawks are six point favorites. It's a forty four and a half point over under. I'm just chuckling a little bit because like my head has disconnected the records from the NFC East. I'm no longer thinking of them in terms of how below five hundred they are. I'm just thinking like, oh, you know, Washington's in it and the Giants are in it and they're fighting for the division and and then I realize like as they fought back and they're they're still below 500. We're almost there. We're as, almost even. Yeah. As they've, what, what have they won? Four, four straight games? Really? Yeah. Yeah. The, the Washington football team has won four straight. Nice. And they are under 500. Well, I still am rooting for them. Oh, for sure. I, I want them to, to win the East just because of Rivera and Alex Smith. Although, Chase Young. Oh, he's so he's good. He's very good. He's so good. Is Alex Smith going to be the quarterback uh, this week? That's the question that needs answered. I really, and and maybe it doesn't. Maybe I don't it's think irrelevant. it needs answering. Here's the only player that I Let's feel like not it needs answer it. answering for, and that's J.D. McKissick. I trust that if Alex Smith is yeah. the quarterback, that J.D. McKissick has a high enough floor in PPR. I don't have that same trust if it's Dwayne Haskins. So that's... You know, if if you're uh, you know a team that's got McKissick, you've been playing him, he's been in your flex, and you've got a decision to make. I think you wait and see who the quarterback is. If it's Dwayne Haskins, I would probably pivot. If it's Alex Smith, I I would be confident. To play. I, I'm confident in both scenarios. So you you're not confident with Haskins. I still saw you know his snap count is enough for me with no Antonio Gibson. Mike, are you scared of him with Haskins? Uh, I I lower my expectations for him because we we haven't seen Haskins feed a, a running back the way that Alex Smith did the way that um, yes uh, Kyle Allen did when he came in a replacement Russell Wilson on the other side of the ball all of his bad games have been against elite pass rushes Chase Young uh oh yeah welcome to the party against the Rams Russell Wilson was the quarterback nineteen when he was sacked six times. Against the Eagles, who have the highest adjusted sack rate, quarterback 19. Against the Giants, that surprise game, well, what happened? He was sacked five times. He's the quarterback 21. This is an important game for Washington. I guess it, you know, you're probably just playing him, but yeah. I am a little concerned with what I might get from Russell Wilson. It's not been a smooth uh, ride over the second half of the year. No, I mean, it, over the last five weeks, he's averaged 19 fantasy points. He's not the elite quarterback that was, you know, scorching the face of the earth to start the season. And this is a really, really tough matchup. Uh, Washington is playing for something, and their only chance is that their defense really shuts the Seahawks down. And we've, we've seen the Seahawks struggle as of late when they play a good defense. So Russell Wilson is not a... 
I don't think he is an absolute ironclad. You have to start him. There would have been pivots. Um, you know, obviously Herbert is out of the way now. Uh, is there anyone else that maybe you have on your team? Would you would you start Russell over Ryan Tannehill, Tom Brady, Deshaun Watson, or are those three names that you might consider in this matchup going the other way? I would play Russ. Would you? Yeah. Man, I really – this this Washington defense has been so stout, especially over the last six weeks. Seventh against quarterbacks, tenth against running backs. I just don't want to be so sure of my Russell Wilson. Oh, I'm, I'm not sure. You'd play him over Tannehill? I would play him over Tannehill, though. Jason? I think I would play him over Tannehill, yes. Mm -hmm. I uh, I don't think I would play him over all of those options I gave. Um Deshaun Watson and Tom Brady, I I might go that direction. Tom Brady g gets a little ding with the Julio out of the lineup for sure, but I, I like Did your you start. Did you mean Matt Ryan? No, I meant Tom oh, Brady okay. because they're playing the Falcons, and if the I Falcons see. can't keep up, then the ceiling is a little bit limited for Brady. But I I, I like I would probably play Deshaun Watson over over Russell Wilson. Yeah, I I think this game is going to be. Um, it's going to be a battle. I'm not going to go almost upset here because I think Seattle can take care of business, but I think it's going to be a very interesting game. Any other storylines from that one that you want to talk about? From the from the game, I mean, uh, Tyler Law or uh, uh, Terry McLaurin. Just to want to talk about him real quick. The the past couple games have been very bad. Uh, now that was against Pittsburgh and against San Francisco, and Terry McLaurin also a little bit hobbled in those matchups. So. I'm still gonna play Terry, uh, the, like, uh, but I'm playing him, you know, as a as a lower end wide receiver too. He has, he he has been very solid uh, f throughout the season, and you've just seen a just a couple of, of bad games here recently. I think he's a bench for me, Jason. Where do you weigh in I, on McLaurin? I I lean towards him being a bench, or at least a, a benchable option. Obviously, it depends on what your pivots are, but he hasn't been that good. The Seahawks, who started the year as just, just two the, games, the matchup four thing. games. The the matchup game you want seven for ninety two five for eighty four those are bad. Uh no they're not bad okay but they're not they're not great he hasn't been in seven for ninety two yeah that one I think is, is still outside at that week he ended up at twenty six so that's okay fine. But, but that's I mean comparing him to everybody else but his still. Odd, look his odds of scoring are low with yes. Dwayne Haskins yes and then if you combine that with injury and you combine that with the last two weeks I just have concerns that's all that's fair um you know. What about Tyler Lockett? I've always had concerns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Jason, it, you playing him? Uh, McLaurin or Lockett? I'm going Lockett. If it's Lockett or T.Y. Hilton, I'm going Hilton. I I think I'm the same on on those three names. I mean, it's it's tough. It's tough to come to terms with those type of decisions late in the season. Mm -hmm. And they're back to back in our rankings. Hilton is one spot higher on our consensus rankings. McLaurin's in the same area. Mike Evans is in the same area. I mean, are you playing Corey Davis against Detroit, Jason, or Tyler Lockett against Washington? I would play Corey Davis in that in that situation. Chris Godwin or Tyler Lockett? Chris oh, Godwin. Chris Godwin. Mike Keenan Allen or Tyler Lockett? Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, you you might lose. I might lose. All right. Uh, Logan Thomas. I think you can play Logan Thomas. The Seahawks defense is bad against it has been bad against tight ends over the last six weeks. He's the tight end five since week six. You combine those things and I think he's a he's an okay play. Like is Logan Thomas ahead of all the names we mentioned on yesterday's show? Uh, Cole Komet. Maybe Tyler Higby. But not if if Dwayne Haskins is the quarterback, then I'm out. Okay, you're just out. Yeah, I, it's okay. I, I, no Haskins, no one else. Policy is just fine. Like we, there's, if you remember the beginning of the season when it was Dwayne Haskins, and you just kept saying, looking at yourself uh -huh. in the mirror over and over, going, "The snaps are there, the routes are there, the targets are there. What is why is why are, is why is it not working out?" You go, "Oh yeah, it's Dwayne Haskins." Yeah, that's why it's, <laughs> you just say no. Uh. <laughs> Jacksonville one and twelve taking on the Baltimore Ravens eight and five. Baltimore 12 and a half point favorites, 47 and a half point over under. And uh, let's keep it simple here. On the Jacksonville side, it's James Robinson. Yep. I, I, I'm i done with that sentence. I, I still question. I think there is flex consideration. We were talking about Marquez Valdez-Scantling. 
Um, right. And you, you know, not by I, choice. Somebody else talked about I, it. I agree, but I'm saying if we're if we're having a conversation about whether you can start uh, MVS, I think you have to have the conversation of whether you can start DJ Chark because DJ Chark has been a massive disappointment this season, but he hasn't had Gardner Minshew, who he had massive success with last season. Now with Gardner on the field, I mean, you know, DJ Chark. We came into this season mm -hmm. uh, believing really good things in Chark. Based and, then, on and then 14 games happened. 14, and how many of those were with Gardner? Uh, not all of them. I mean, a few in the beginning of the year. I'm just saying there's 0% chance on playing DJ Chark. Just, I, I've been saying that for weeks, though, and you guys keep fighting me on that. He's playing Baltimore, and I'm sure you'll end up right this week if you agree with me, but uh, why? I just don't want to do DJ Chark against Baltimore. Sure. And you can't make me. I won't make you, Andy. Okay. <laughs> like, I'll play Willie Sneed over him. Would you play MVS over Chark then? Oh, gosh. Neither. Uh, nope. But yes, I would play okay. MVS over DJ Chark. There you go. Because um, he's not on a 1-12 in Jacksonville team playing in Baltimore this week. Okay, Baltimore Minshew. side of the ball. That, that That's the, all the conversation that needs to happen on the Jacksonville side. Um, on the Baltimore side... I love J.K. Dobbins. I think he's yeah. a great start. Yep. That does not mean that you cannot start Gus Edwards. I agree. I, th I think Gus Edwards is a fine play. This is a terrible Jacksonville team, uh, terrible run defense. Gus and Bus, let's go. Absolutely. I, I think both are in play because they're they're both going to get enough work. You saw Dobbins had a good week last really? week, and that was with Gus. Gus is ridiculous. Edwards seven for 101, seven for 49. That's what he's done the last two weeks. And two touchdowns. I know. I'm just saying, like, the work he's getting, it's seven carries, and he's dominating with them. Yeah, he's under 10 opportunities for five straight games, and yet still had a couple good fantasy games. Would you play the Gus Bus, or would you uh, play Jeff Wilson, assuming that Raheem Mo they're like, M Mostert's good to go. Would you play Jeff Wilson, or would you play the Gus Bus? Jeff Wilson. I would as well. Um, more opportunities. Let me ask you a question. I, I had to play Darren Waller, Dynasty League semifinals last night. Don't feel good. Don't feel great. I had to play against Darren Against Waller, him. Yeah. Sorry, I had to play against him. Because it sounded really good what no, you said. Yeah. No, 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 no. Um, I have Mark Andrews. Do I am, I? am I dead, or can Mark Andrews give me the type of game this week to keep me in that match? Mark Andrews can give you 50% of the Waller. Yeah, I, I think he can give you seventy five percent of the Waller. You're I would I would take his deal over what I just offered you. Uh, yes, Mister Cuban, I'm taking your <laughs> offer. Um, yeah, I mean the reality is you you've got um, a wide receiver core banged up, or you know on the COVID list we talked about Willie Sneed having a a genuine need for Sneed in this game because yeah. there aren't other wide receivers. But the reality is his main receiving target is Mark Andrews, and the Jaguars are going to give up plenty through the air because they just love to do that. So Mark Andrews is a great Man. play this week. But do you realize wh – where is Mark Andrews on the season right now? And He's got to be very high. Like Mark Andrews' season as a whole feels incredibly disappointing. Yes. Uh, does it? Yes. I think it does. Because really? you, you, were, you were drafting a locked and loaded – when you spent the pick, it was because he's a top three guy. He has five games outside of the top 20. And five in the top four. Yeah. So it's been very and then and then the couple COVID games. The same, I I yeah, know I know yeah. that the, the sentiment out there is the Mark Andrews season feels bad. It feels very disappointing, and yet missing two games, he is currently the tight end seven. Yeah, yep. with, with two games missed, that's impressive. Uh, yeah, he's a, he's a great option. Uh, all right, the Jets at zero and thirteen take on the nine and four Rams. The Rams are incredible seventeen and a half point favorites. It's a forty three and a half point over under. And this, look, the equation in this game is pretty simple. The Rams' defense is elite. It's arguably the best in football. Can the Jets score? And I don't think the answer is yes. I don't think they can score on this. Out, outside of Jared Goff making a mistake and a turnover and the special teams, you know, over under one touchdown, one and a half touchdowns for the Jets. Oh, I mean, oh, that you moved that line to a delicious place. I will take the under on one and a half. Yeah, I mean, Frank Gore... I don't think you start him. Mm -mm. Crowder, Perryman, Mims. Who do you take the shot with? Man, it, Crowder has been, you know, missing practices. He's been banged up. Uh, Is this the time where you pivot to Herndon? <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh, kidding, of course. 
Mars. <laughs> Good one. Oh, uh, no. no. Ben- bench all Jets. I, I think yeah. it's bench all Jets. Yeah. I'm not playing Gore, Ty Johnson, Crowder, Perriman, Mims. Uh, the, we've said this a couple times. Like, oh, we're we're not going to play, but there's always one guy that sneaks in. I think this is the first time that genuinely there's nobody. There's not a tight end. Right. There's not a backup well, running back. Let's be fair to Chris Herndon, guys. The, the the week against Seattle, that was his best showing in three weeks. Oh, yeah? What did he do? He caught one pass for nine yards. Incredible work, Chris. I'm sorry, Chris. This isn't it's, your fault. Yeah, no, it's it not, is. Yes. It's, we, it's, we laugh because it's funny because yeah. like, we every, we wanted to believe in him. And it's not your fault, Chris. This, I, I genuinely believe once Mr. B-Hole is gone, Chris Herndon will have a fine career. Yeah, I don't believe that either, but I don't believe it's do. Adam Gaze's fault. I think Herndon's – his ship has sailed in terms of elite. Like, he might be – he might contribute to the team, but, I I mean, come on. I, I, I've seen I've seen magical things happen too many times when they escape the, the dark, dark place that is Adam Gaze. <laughs> All right. What There's- about – Oh, what, about, what, are you announcing? what about Jared Goff? I think he's a, a very polarizing fantasy start each and every week because you just don't know what this offense is going to look like. You know, the Jets though they give up the most points to fantasy quarterbacks in football. They give up the most points to fantasy running or wide receivers in football. Goff can I, do a lot in a half here. Yeah, I I know that the the Rams want to run the ball. They're going to be up big, so they're going to run the ball. Um, they've been succeeding with that. I I I get that whole that whole narrative and and that will happen but the jets are better against the run than they are against the pass and the way this game is going to start is with some easy jaunts down the field in the passing game and some scores i mean you look back in seattle top 10 quarterback week las vegas top 10 quarterback week miami top 10 quarterback week the chargers top 10 quarterback week the patriots top 10 quarterback week the Chiefs, obviously, number one quarterback week. Uh, the, that's that's a stretch in a row. That's not through the course of the season cherry right. picking games. That's that that's all their previous games, and and all these teams won. So they were up. They were able to run the ball. I I think I'm starting Jared Goff this week. Cam Akers is Mike's start of the week. Seventy nine percent of snaps last week. You can play Cam Akers, and you can do it confidently. Mm-hmm. Robert Woods. He was limited in practice on Thursday with the thigh. He'll be out there. Um, I heard they were just literally. I think McVeigh said they're they're he, just managing. He did his workload and and his rest. I I don't believe this is a an injured situation. I think this is a a you play football. You're banged up. We want to give you rest. Cooper Cup, Robert Woods. You play him. Tyler Higby. I think is a sneaky start at the tight end position. Jets are worse than football against the tight end. And uh, you could be in touchdown territory with Higby. Yes, Jason agrees. I do. All right, Eagles four eight and one. Cardinals seven and six. Cardinals are six point favorites. Who? <clears throat> I don't know if they win straight up. Forty nine point over under. It was an impressive defensive performance by Arizona last week, and this is week number two for Jalen Hurts. Some film out there to uh, take a look at. My hunch is that Jalen Hurts will be a tad more mobile than uh, Daniel Jones was last week. That's a fair hunch. It's a fair hunch to the point of you making him your start of the week. Mm -hmm. 13 designed runs. That's what you want to see for that guaranteed baseline at the quarterback position. Hertz could have a bad game and be fine for fantasy. And that's something that should comfort you with the Cardinals being favored and the Eagles being kind of up and down. Quarterback design runs are far more effective than a normal running back rushing attempt. And we just talked about how Gus Edwards is getting seven, eight, maybe nine, ten touches a game. You've got a 13 design run baseline, 100 rushing yards. Jalen Hurts is is going to run all over the Cardinals. Now, whether he can get it done and in the red zone, throw the touchdowns, rush the touchdowns in, we we don't have enough evidence, but I like the talent, and I'm, I'm with you, Mike. I would start Jalen Hurts because he's got a floor, and I think the upside is there too. Kyler Murray's rushing attempts jumped up last week as well. Kyler Murray, you're going to play him. Kenyon Drake could end up in a situation where he is getting every rep. Oh, I mean, baby. Ch- Chase Edmonds. Uh, look, Kenyon Drake started the year not great. He could end the year winning you um, a fantasy title with we his. We call that the Kenyon Drake. Yeah, that's what he did last year. That's just fair. This is what he does. It's every- a good name for it. <laughs> every time Kenyon Drake, every time he, he convinces people to fall in love with him, it's because of this. It's because at the end of the season, magic happens. 
things align and he shows up in a big way. He's been he's been he's good. been good. Yes, I mean he's the running back eight since week four, and that's with missing a game. Right. Miles Sanders last week did he? You know, is this one of those situations where he completely redeemed himself? It is. It is. You're starting him with joy, yeah, joy and confidence. It, the snaps went back. The I mean, one game sample size. So what? What else are you going to go on? But just the it. It feels like the team has said yes. Okay, the the best way for Jalen Hurts to have success is for us to pair him with Miles Sanders. Don't start any Eagles wide receivers. Start DeAndre Hopkins and don't start any other Cardinals wide receivers. And then Dan Arnold, are you are you in on the post, man? I mean, it's been it, he's been delivering. He has on scored time. in. I mean, that's what you get. <laughs> he's scored in three of the last four weeks. Now his snap percentage is is minuscule. He doesn't block. He comes in and he tries to catch a big pass. Yeah, it's really hard for me to rely on him. You know, you're you're yeah, looking at two targets, three targets, three targets, four targets, and and he has found the the touchdown recently but I don't want to rely on if I don't get a touchdown then I'm getting a goose or a, mm -hmm. a nine yard game I I think that there are better touchdown you know Cole Komet and Big Irv you're relying on a touchdown with those guys you're not going to be happy without a touchdown but if they don't get it they're going to be four for 45 yeah I'd and rather play the Dalton Schultz in a terrible matchup what about the other side of the ball, though, with the two Philadelphia tight ends? I'm still up. I'll start Dallas Goddard as a, a low end tight end one. Are you out on Ertz? Yes, I am out. Okay. Kansas City, 12 and 1, taking on Drew Brees and the New Orleans Saints at 10 and 3. Kansas City, three point favorites, 51 and a half point over under. Very excited about this game with Brees returning. Um, Right now, the Vegas odds for the Super Bowl, Chiefs, then the Packers, Saints, Rams, and Bills rounding out the top five there. So a uh, battle between two of the top five in that department. It's just a matter of can the Saints score enough to keep up with the inevitable, and uh, that should be the nickname for Patrick Mahomes and company, <laughs> the inevitable, because you're going to have to score 30-plus points. I am inevitable. It feels that way. And, and even when they look terrible. I mean, Miami, what did they do? They made Patrick Mahomes uh, – Turn him into a turnover machine. I think he had, what, one on the year, and he, they had three? Uh-huh. Yeah, he, he still did away with them. Mm -hmm. So, um, Drew Brees or Jalen Hurts, your start of the week, Mike? Oh, man. I would play I, I can confidently say Hurts in that one. Yeah, I, I lean Hurts. Okay. Um, Patrick Mahomes, 60, 20-plus-yard pass plays this year. <laughs> Feels Wait, made up. 16? No, 60. 60. Six zero? Six yeah. zero. 20 yard? Yeah. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Yes. <laughs> With weeks to play. that I mean, that's just, that's not fair. Uh, Alvin Kamara, of course, you play him. And he gets a he gets a massive bump up now. Yeah, he does. Uh, that's that's one of the most delightful things about the switch back to Drew Brees. We don't know the health of Michael Thomas. Yes, but Super Camario. He had he had mushroom stew last night. <laughs> yes, he is big. <laughs> big Alvin. Um, Michael Thomas has not scored this year, but we have not got to see Michael Thomas and Drew Brees together since the return, and maybe we do now. Right now, you have to pay attention to practice reports today. Yeah. You have to follow. The, we don't have any more information other than the fact he didn't practice Wednesday, Thursday. That's bad. Yeah, right I, now, if I had to like base it off of that, I don't think he's out there. Yeah, and, and you almost hope that if it's a serious injury, he, he is ruled out because this could be another Keenan Allen situation. But you can't just they can't look win at a without one, him. <laughs> you can't you can't look at a one game sample size and and extrapolate that. We've seen both sides of this. Players come back from injuries and dominate. Players come back from injuries and and they're limited or or they don't even get on the field uh like Clyde Edwards Alaire. I I you know the the whole trickeration and and That's hiding their cards and being all all wily. It feels maximum this year. Yeah, but with Peyton that that leads me to believe Maybe Michael Thomas is better than they're letting on because he's actually been dealing with this same injury for weeks. So it's it's kind of surprising to me that it's that is you know now all of a sudden he's not going to play when he's been playing through it. Clyde Edwards-Alaire against a 
an outstanding Saints defense. I don't think he has the big playability that Miles brings to the table. He is uh, not shown that this year, and I, it does give me concern this week against uh, the Saints. Like I, I, I'm, I'm trying to find somebody else. Would you play him or or Bruce Wayne Gallman against the Cleveland Browns? I guess I'll go Clyde. Okay. Uh, let's go uh, Melvin Gordon against Buffalo or Clyde. I think I'll go Melvin. I would as well. All right, Jared Cook, Jason, start of the week. Over the last month, Kansas City allowing almost 25 fantasy points per game to the tight end position, and that is a lot. That's the second most in football. So you can you can go the and he gets he was, an upgrade too. I was gonna say he was my start of the week with with Taysom in. This is great news. It is, and uh, Tyreek's in your lineup. Kelsey's in your lineup. It's not rocket science. Mm -hmm. The Cleveland Browns at nine and four take on the five and eight New York Giants and Bruce Wayne Gallman. The Browns are six point road favorites. It's a forty four and a half point over under. And again, it comes down to can the Giants really score points in this matchup? Daniel Jones, uh, obviously hurting, not bringing to the table his best attribute, which is his legs. And then Colt McCoy, if he's in there, you know, we've been saying it. it it's not really possible to start a pass catcher on this team. Yeah, and they, they have lost their uh, OC. Jason Garrett is on the COVID-19 list, which is now set up a revenge game. Freddie Kitchens. Oh, yeah. Will Freddie be, Kitchens is will calling, be the calling plays. plays against the Cleveland Browns. I'll tell you who couldn't revenge game slash <laughs> Kyle Perico heist plan, prepare, and execute. It's Freddie Kitchens. I tend to agree. That guy makes his plan for the heist 10 minutes before. There's no doubt. Yeah, Let's that, go kick in the doors. Be strong, guys. Now, is this a, a revenge, like a, a double revenge game? where Freddie Kitchens thinks he's getting the wrench, but it's actually going to be Baker Mayfield yes. who says, you made me look like a bum last year. Well, it, yeah, I mean, you probably have somebody better to play with a better guaranteed uh, situation than Baker. The Giants have been really, really good against opposing fantasy quarterbacks. They have not given up big weeks, and it's kind of a something's got to give because Baker's been on fire. He's been the quarterback 12, 3, and 2 the last three weeks. The Giants only give up 13.3 fantasy points per game over the last six weeks and 16 on the year. So this has been a consistent theme for them, but no James Bradbury. Yeah, that's what I was going to bring up. James Bradbury being gone makes a big difference. That's like, you know, they're... they're but does it, though? Because he only is an outside guy, and you're, it doesn't impact Landry at all. I, I guess the way yeah, that I not Landry. The, the way that I see it is you, you look at, you know, we're, we're obviously intimately familiar with the Cardinals. If they lost Patrick Peterson... Everything has to change for their defense. And Bradbury has been phenomenal. When you lose a mm -hmm. y your number one, you know, shutdown corner, it, it does change things. Now, does it change it enough for me to put Baker in the lineup? Probably not. Does it does it change him enough for me to have a Baker DFS play? Sure, uh, take the shot that he has a big game. But the reality is, the the Giants are beatable on the ground. That's what the Browns want to do. I think they'll have success there. And I don't think that the Giants will score enough to make Baker have to throw the ball. All right, Kareem Hunt or Wayne Gallman? Kareem Hunt. Kareem Hunt. Okay, they're back-to-back -back in our rankings. And then uh, beyond that, you are obviously playing Nick Chubb. He has been unbelievable, averaging almost 20 touches a game. And then that's probably the end of the story here. Yeah, I mean, you. yeah, hopefully. Yes, it is to me, Evan Ingram. The Pittsburgh Steelers at eleven and two on a two game losing streak against the Cincinnati Bengals, two ten and one. This is a nice salve for a losing streak. The the Steelers are twelve and a half point favorites on the road, forty and a half point over under. That only gives the Bengals fourteen points in this game, and I'd be excited to play my Steelers defense despite them being beat up against Brandon Allen or Ryan Finley. Probably Ryan Finley. Yeah. Brandon that's Allen, a delight. Yeah, Brandon Allen has not been able to practice. So we're going third string depth here. Well, he was second string. Well, yeah, and then he, he was got, demoted. He got demoted by a dude off the street, basically. So we're I feels fourth string. You're right, was second, feels fourth. Um, there is is there a, a Bengal that you would be willing to play? I personally moved Boyd Higgins and AJ Green down. W Ryan Finley against the Steelers. I'm like, no, thank you. Yeah. No, I don't want to play any Bengals. We've done it again. Yeah, I mean, th there's some matchups this week. The Rams game. With the Jets and then the Bengals game with the Steelers defense. No, thank you. Well, you don't usually see 12 and a half point favorites, 17 and a half point favorites. This week has some monster lopsided matchups. 
Yeah, and and we've seen it once this year already. Thirty-seven to ten in Week Ten, Pittsburgh rolled the Bengals. Big Ben is one eight straight against them. This is going to be helpful for this team to work some kinks out of this offense. And so you know, Juju, Deontay, Claypool. Look, Deontay, he could he could get benched, but he could also have a huge game because they need him. They're they're all in play. James Conner, though, I think maybe you just. It's it is so Brutal. hard to quad, take a quad injury. Is that right? Yes, uh, he's dealing with a quad injury, and he is. Stunk. He could play two snaps. He could play two snaps, but they're twelve and a half point favorites. I'm not doing it. I I, I would really like to have James Conner out of my lineup. I I, I don't think he's going to play. That'll make it easier. But then do you do you then, take the chance yeah. on Benny Snell against the Bengals? Because Benny Snell without James Conner, one of the reasons I dropped him in 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 a league was because I knew in that I wasn't going to play him if Conner was out. I knew that this team was not going to put enough touches into his, uh, you know, I just wasn't going to play him. You know how the backup running back comes in and gets fewer carries, but because they're they're fresher and the the team isn't playing the defense, they always have a much better yards per attempt. Right. Benny Snell on the season is 3.3 yards per attempt. He stinks. Okay. Well, let me give you a he smells. an example of uh, where you may have to play Benny Snell. Let's say, uh, like, We'll look at my listener league team here. I have ah Julio Jones is random out. example here. Julio Jones is out, uh, and so now I'm looking at in a 14 teamer. Do I play Marquez, DeAndre Washington, Zach Moss, Gio Bernard, or try and pick up Benny Snell and play him? I am sorry for your loss. That's that's what I mean. Like there are there are situations where people are having to play these guys. I would play most of those options over Benny Snell. Okay. Um. Okay. Eric Ebron. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Big Ben. Yep. I mean, like he's not a Big Ben or Baker. Big, oh, that's. A great, I would play Ben. Big Baker well. or Big Baker, Big Baker. or Ben Mayfield. <laughs> I'd go Big Baker because that name's awesome. <laughs> I feel like that's what I'm gonna be when I retire from this. I'm just gonna be the You're Big Baker. You're gonna be a Big Baker. <laughs> yeah. Come on down to Big Bakers. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't. If he wants to be Big Baker, it doesn't really take. Too much effort. Uh, he can get it done. Yeah. All right. Let's move on. Prop it like it's hot. Presented by Monkey Knife Fight. Favorite week 15 props over at Monkey Knife Fight. Very fun place to play. And we've got a special situation going on that I'll Ooh. tell you about momentarily. But first, our favorite props. I'm going with T.Y. Hilton, 11.5 fantasy points. And I'm taking the more. Mm. Uh, doy. <laughs> <laughs> Three straight Did you weeks. Hit him with a doy. He hit me with a doy. doy. Is it 1995? I saw 11 and a half, and I was like, "Oh man, that's an insane reception total." I would definitely not take the over. I mean, it could happen, but wait, that's total fantasy points. Yeah, total fantasy points. He's hit it three straight weeks. Houston has given up 27 plus to the wide receiver position in four straight, and 37 plus in two of those matchups. And you've got T.Y. Houston narrative street. So I'm going to go with. More than 11.5 fantasy points for T.Y. Hilton. I like it. I am uh, following our Rulio 11 with Matt Ryan. He has a line of 275 and a half passing yards, and that sounds easy for Matt Ryan. He's been a – yeah. he's Mr. Yardage. He's a yard machine. Uh, I'm definitely going less on this week because since their bye week, in the last four games of Matt Ryan, Mr. Yardage has averaged 228 passing yards. Woof. Mrs. Yardage doesn't like that one bit. No. No. <laughs> Mrs. Yardage is like, I, I, I've got to go back to my maiden name. I'm looking for a divorce here. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I, I am taking less than 275 against Tampa Bay. All right. And I want to highlight Cam Akers. His line is 77 and a half rushing yards. I am going to take them more. He has hit that in two of his last three games. He is playing against the Jets, so the matchup is there. They are 17 and a half point favorites. I will take the starting running back to grind out a ton of rushing yards. It feels like he averaged about 77 per carry last game he it played, was... the way he was gashing that defense. So, special bonus. Oh, Listen, this is really cool. If you want to play a monkey knife, at, maybe you've held off, you haven't jumped in with us for all of these prop games. It's very fun. Um, we bring them to you every week. There is a special bonus for this week. Bonus. If you're a first-time depositor, there is a 100 a 120% match up to $50 and you use the code 
Ballers bonus at monkeyknifefight.com. Ballers bonus. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. So check it's that me, out. Adam. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That'll do it for today's show. Thank you so much for listening, tuning in. We wish you the best of luck on your Week 15 playoff matchups that you can avoid long-term tilt. It's a very serious disease. Yes. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Sunday Goodbye. Live. Sunday Live. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.